Hi everyone, it's Fowler from Online Combat Battalion and in this Armour 3 video I'm going to show you how to do the startup procedure and some of the systems for the Hatchet H60 pack. Um, I have the Hatchet Framework development version and the Hatchet H60 pack development version uh, which gives you these incredible advanced helicopters. These are not your standard RHS jump in, push the throttle and fly. Uh, you've actually got to interact with the cockpit to get these going. It does require ACE, so that may put some people off, but uh, this is definitely worth having ACE for. So prior to starting the aircraft up, I'm going to show you that this, this is an interactive cockpit. So we've got a lot of things we can interact with in the cockpit, including all the um, uh, flight controls, obviously, the uh, systems to get the aircraft going etc so what I'm going to do firstly is I'm just going to turn battery one and two on you'll see a bunch of red words coming up and they are just uh, hints to show you which key you have bound to interact with those items um, so I've put on the uh, the batteries and I'm going to show you some of the displays so we have the uh, PFD, which is your artificial horizon, your compass, your altimeter, uh, your indicated airspeed in knots, and um, you have your uh, torque meter here. Uh, then if we go to ND, which is your compass, um, this is all your aircraft uh, systems, so temps, pressures, um, your N1, N, NP1, NP2 torques and all that sort of stuff. Then we have the IVHMS. And this is a cool little thing that shows you everything about not only the aircraft, but the mission you're actually playing at the time. So we have here the aircraft version, um, the Australian Slick, um, SVNS 70A9. Um, we have the armor version that you're using. We have the vehicle modules that are active. We have all the mods loaded in this mission. And we also have the name of the mission in the middle, which is 2022 Land Warfare Center, one player, and then the map name, which is all pretty cool. Now on this screen, there's no other interactive buttons that you can use down the sides. Um, that's pretty much just for uh, information. Now we have the tax system, which is your tactical map. And I'll show you how that works a little bit more in a minute with the navigation systems. Then we have the JVMF, which is a messaging system that works between uh, aircraft. So um, I'm gonna cycle through the messages. Uh, here's a message uh, that was sent at 12 o'clock. Um, and the message is grid elevation, name LZ bronze, comments approach from the south and watch for things and stuff, which is hugely descriptive. Um, and I can acknowledge that message. I can say I will comply um, or have complied or can't comply, which is what these things here mean. Um, I'm going to cycle to the next page. So that's it. This is just a little explanation on how the messages work. Uh, no new message, no other messages. I can now uh, create a message and I'll make the message for zero alpha. And we are departing soon. I can hit send and now I can go to cycle through and there's the message that I've just sent uh, from me to Zero Alpha and other aircraft operating in your area will be able to see that message. Okay, so that's the messaging system. So I'm going to go back to uh, the tactical map and then I'm going to go to navigation systems. And in the navigation panel there you can see we have... Uh, my current location is heading 226 and I am 0, 0.0 nautical miles away from myself, which is nice to know. Um, 
Now I can go to location stores. And this will show you what this system does is it indexes all the locations on the map that you are playing at the time. So we have areas on this map called Black Bay. Uh, we have the Canadian Forces Base Moosehead, which is pretty much the base area. The Captain Jennifer Casey Airport, etc., etc. Now we can go through and well, we'll go back to locations. We can view, and Black Bay is heading 204 and 5 nautical miles from here. And we've got a slew FLIR button. Um, and let me see, we can actually um, slew, we can zoom in and out on this. We can actually slew the, uh, the FLIR to the location. Uh, I'll try that again, slew FLIR. Anyway, um, I'll play around with that a bit more later. I can add Black Bay to waypoints. And now you'll see I have a line from my aircraft to the Black Bay waypoint. Okay, so that's how the navigation system works. You can add additional waypoints. Um, and if you're using a helmet that has a heads up display that's compatible, uh, I'm not currently, this will all display in the uh, heads up display. I don't think. I'm pretty sure there is a button in here that you can press that will enable it in your HUD, but I don't know what that is right now. So that's the navigation system and the messaging system. Now we're gonna go through the engine startup procedure. Now if you don't know how to do that, we'll go over to the menu and we'll go to checklists and then to startup checklist. So we need generator one and two on. Gen 1 and Gen 2 on. Let's have a look at the checklist again. Battery 1 and battery 2 are already on. Fuel pump APU, which is the third, and you'll see, it might be hard for you to see, it actually is marked with the number 3. Okay. So 3 is on. Then we're going to go to APU cont on. And we'll put that on. And now I can hear the aircraft starting to make some noise. Five, we need the APU generators on. APU gen and standby instruments. We're going to arm those. And then we can go to the engine start checklist. Ignition key to on. Um, eight APU, which is the air source. Um, then we're going to go to number nine, which is fuel one. So that's the fuel system there, and we're going to put that on all the way forward. Then we're going to go to press engine one starter, which is here. Oh, fuel system. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to take that off because I like to do this in order. Fuel system engine one. Starter engine one. So engine one's now cranking up. And if I'm correct, repeat for engine number two. So fuel system on. Starter for, for engine number two. So now engine number two is starting. Okay. Now we need the APU quant off. And that is it for startup. And we must be missing something because not all my instruments are displayed or showing. So we should have additional displays. I've missed something. I've missed a step somewhere. Oh, of course. Um, power. The engines one and two on all the way. And I've still missed something because I don't have all my... Ah, oh, there we go. All my displays are on now. So you've got two displays per um, pilot. I'm going to switch. I'm going to leave that there and switch this to my TAC map. Um, if you have a co-pilot, they have identical systems on their side, which you cannot access from the pilot seat. Only the co-pilot can access the co-pilot side. 
and vice versa. Uh, you'll note we've got some really nice um, animation stuff here for the cyclic control and the collective control is the same that comes up nicely and back down again uh, so that is pretty much how this works it also has uh, you can uh, change your heading uh, by using a scroll wheel on the heading control dial and you will see that uh, the marker there changes as you move that and I'm going to set the heading to be roughly where our waypoint is um, you can also uh, control the indicated airspeed and this is like an autopilot system so um, I can put that on indicated airspeed altitude and because I put altitude it's probably yep yep there we go it's going to take off on me so <laughs> The autopilot is definitely working, um, and if I now, because it's taking me to 500, I'm going to turn the autopilot off. Now it's going to have conniptions and put me back on the ground, so I better put some power on. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to fly it, because I think um, we all know how the aircraft fly in the game. Um, but these things are brilliant to fly. The messaging system is awesome. If you're using a really big map with a lot of different locations you can use the navigation system to navigate between the uh, the points uh, it also puts a marker out there for you shows you where the waypoint is um, so yeah that is pretty much it um, there are additional mods you can get to put gear in the back of these uh, which is really good I think you can do lifting and hoisting off these as well um, so if you're a flyer and you love helicopters as much as I do and you love using them in armor then this is definitely the uh, the way for you to go if you want to have something a little more advanced than your standard jump in throttle up and take off helicopters um, that's all for this video if you've got questions uh, throw them in the comments section below visit us on our discord the link for discord will be in the description below thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video